The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN 906 AM Tuesday morning. We got 24 minutes to go until the start of trading. We have markets in positive territory. All the markets trading lower into the lows last night, but since about 3 a.m. Eastern time, you've caught quite a bit. You had the S&Ps down there at about 43.20. How about adding about 40 S&P points to that price level? We're positive by eight points. So you're about 32 points in the red overnight. That price point was at about nine o'clock. We were at that price point at about three o'clock in the morning. Things accelerate higher with positive coming into the open right now. NASDAQ 100, you were down at a price point overnight. You're talking about a low of 14,586. You're approaching 200 points to the upside from there. You got the Dow positive by 41 points. The Dow had been approaching 34,100, made it to 34,125. So the Dow's caught a bid to the tune of 300 points off the overnight lows and the Russell with some volatility down to 2,195. You've gained more than a percent. From the bottom there, you're up at 2218 right now in the Russell. Got to jump to Bitcoin. Quite the acceleration to higher prices. We saw a price of 58,355 yesterday. We're just off that mark at 57,705 in the price of Bitcoin. Why not? Let's jump over to Ethereum as well since the cryptos are rocking. Ethereum makes it up to 3,700 on Friday. We're trading at 3,455. Crude contract back under $80. A little bit of an acceleration this morning. 745 you're above 81 bucks look at this drop off right now 7950 i wonder if this has to do with we just got a little imf update for in terms of pairing their estimates for growth uh maybe that's hitting the oil market 7954 down from 8020 down from 81 bucks in the seven o'clock hour this morning natural gas continuing to slide a bit check out this natural gas contract on a daily you're up to 646 what's that almost a week ago we're currently trading at 522 right now. We're down at about 2% in natural gas. Gold catching a little bit of a bid, up about six bucks this morning. Gold trading at 1762. You see the volatility on gold even in the last hour. We jump to notes and bonds right now. We're getting a little bit of higher price and lower yield. You have the 10 year right now trading positive seven ticks. We're sitting right at about 1.6%. The yield on the 10-year, you get the 30-year up 24 ticks, a little bit of a reversal of the action we had yesterday. We'll jump over to the volatility index with the VIX right now, trading at 1945. Now, over in Europe, you got markets in negative territory. The DAX is down four tenths percent. FTSE is down four tenths percent as well. CAC Carole down about four tenths as well. Over in Asia, negative as well. Nikkei down almost a percent. Shanghai down 1.2%. Um, yeah, and uh, the Hang Seng down 1.4%. All the major indexes in China and Korea falling at least 1% as oil prices continue to rise was the headline, but getting a little bit of a reversal in the last hour or so in that crude price. Let's jump back to crude because continuing to drop. We're at 79.59. As I said, we were just sitting at above 81 bucks coming into the 8 o'clock a.m. hour. All right, jumping around what we have going on, we'll jump to that IMF as they cut the global growth forecast, citing supply disruptions and the pandemic is how they put it. Put it, excuse me. So uh, there's the headline out this morning, just as I was coming onto the program, IMF cuts its global growth forecast, citing supply disruptions. Uh, we'll be talking to Kevin Hinks coming up after this break uh, on their program, Fast Market. Yesterday, they were talking a little bit, noon Eastern time every day, folks. They were talking a little bit. Kevin was talking about uh, sometimes there are themes, many times there are themes coming through an earnings season. Uh, what's the theme going to be as we start this earnings season off tomorrow, really, with the banks, J.P. Morgan? What's the theme going to be? One of the themes possible, Kevin thinks. Uh, we're going to talk to him about it. Supply disruptions, and you're seeing it already with the IMF cutting it. Now, it's a 0.1% cut. They expect the global GDP to grow by 5.9% this year. 5.9%. That's only 0.1 percentage points lower than its July estimate. 
For the next year, the IMF has kept its global growth production at 4.9%. So you trim it from 6 to 5.9. You keep next year's at 4.9. For all the gloom and doom out there, doesn't seem to be that big of a cut. Uh, nonetheless, you have crude trading lower. You have markets actually ticking up 43.62 in the U.S. markets. That is at least, as I said, you got Europe in negative territory right now. Asia down almost a percent right now coming into uh, trading. All right, let's jump around to other headlines I have up here. Why not? Let's jump over to Bank of America. Warning, the Fed won't rush to stock markets rescue this time. Interesting uh, article out there this morning uh, over on Bloomberg talking about the U.S. Federal Reserve may not be so eager to rescue the stock market this time around, according to Bank of America strategists. Man, you start pulling that Kool-Aid, the free Kool-Aid away. Uh, the Fed may be less willing to so easily deviate from tapering plans and talk the market back up during as during the last cycle. Um, as reasons for their skepticism, they cite equity valuations and returns accelerating to extremes and increasingly real risk of inflation over shooting um you know you start seeing and we're seeing it already with the jobs number under 200,000 um a slow clawback maybe the market figuring out that inflation is here maybe supply shortages right wages increasing causing earnings to decrease that's going to hurt valuations of companies could send the stock market lower at a time when the the fed plans on tapering but after six consecutive quarters of gains that have been driven by generous monetary and fiscal support, momentum has been fading for the U.S. and European equities in recent weeks. S&P down almost 4% from its record high reach last month. Surging inflation, tapering fears, energy crisis, slowdown concerns. We just got an IMF cut, and we're coming into an earnings season that we could see some real problems with supply shortages uh, and with rising costs in a big way. FedEx last month, really uh, a wake-up call as FedEx. Let's jump over. Because I talked about this stock a little bit yesterday. And look at it. I mean, even yesterday, you trade down two bucks on this equity. Now, pulling back the full run from the COVID lows, we'll call it. Now, this is really May that it started to accelerate. You're back at 219. So this thing gets anywhere near 186. That would be a great buy um, for FedEx. And you're talking about a solid 15% down from where you're at right now. But man, you just traded down at even $100 from the 319 high we had recently. We pull up UPS. UPS shares down from 219 to 181, kind of back to an area of support here that had been an area of resistance in the end of the year. Now, what they were also talking about on Fast Market yesterday was a great conversation of Home Depot versus Lowe's. They brought in uh, like Folio, and they were just talking about uh, the two of these companies. They were talking about trends. They were talking about trends in retail, whether, you know, self renovations, redoing your own home projects versus contractors, contractors up in terms of people using contractors. Maybe they kind of exhausted everything they could do at home over the last year and a half. They've now reached the jobs that they're just not up to, uh, or maybe they have enough equity in their house where they're just willing to pay for a contractor to up the deal there. Home Depot, pretty close to the highs when you look at it. Low shares right up against that level as well as housing prices persist in a big way. Low sitting at 208. Highs of 215, Home Depot just a few bucks off that price level as well. All right, as we come into 915 this morning, we get the S&P is continuing to catch a bid near the pre-market session highs right now. We're up 10 points at 4361. As I said, we had market lows last night of 4328. So you're talking about a solid 42 points off the lows of last evening. NASDAQ, 14,763. Stay tuned, folks. When we come back, we'll be talking to Kevin Hicks from TD Ameritrade Network, Fast Market. We'll be right back. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. 
educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&Ps positive by nine points, trading at 43.60. We have a VIX right now, right under 20. Jumping over to the volatility index, 1941. We're approaching 21 last night when you had the market near session, pre-market session lows at about 3 a.m. Eastern time. Now, you take a look at this S&P. They don't look like the huge moves that they actually are because of the moves that we've had. You back it up to last Wednesday, you're at 4280. You climb up 140 S&P points to 4420. You then trade down. 100 S&P points to 43.20. We've caught a bit of about 40, even from where we were yesterday, folks. You trade from a price level highs yesterday, about 10 a.m., 44.07. You trade down, uh, yeah, 87 points almost to last night. We have a 40-point bounce. We have moves in both directions going in this market, folks. Let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hicks. Every trading day, folks, noon Eastern time, fast market. Kevin Hicks, Tom White on the TD Ameritrade Network. Walking you through the day's market action, setting up hypothetical trades in this market, talking about defined risk, talking about coming into earnings. And Kevin, what are we looking for? I heard you yesterday. What's going to be the theme? Sometimes there's themes. We're looking for themes in this earnings season, kicking it off. Well, what, are, what are we looking for for a theme this season, Kevin? Uh, well, I think the theme for this earnings season is going to be the comps. And... What you're going to see, it's going to be several things. It's going to be, you know, the, the, the original problem will be comps to last year, right? That, that, that will make earnings not as sexy as they were in quarters past. But after that, it'll be labor shortage. It'll be supply chain. And that'll be the theme. That'll be the, the, the drum that the CEOs are pounding when they're doing their conference calls. And that any, any problems with their earnings per share or revenue will all be brought back to supply chain and logistics and and labor shortages and inability inability to get workers in at some of these places tommy i i put you on the spot a little bit it's a million dollar question but i love the show you guys were doing yesterday and just the way you were talking about um you know we're coming into the season banks have one expectation um probably pretty lofty expectations with the way they've traded recently with what we've happened with yields um but then you get into further in the season 
And I think we're all kind of aware, and we'll see how it plays out, that we have some real headwinds in terms of just like you brought up, man, supply chains, wages. Uh, we have an IMF cut this morning, pretty marginal cut of 0.1%, uh, and they right. keep next year's number in there. But a cut nonetheless, talking about the same factors you're talking about. Uh, I also love when you were talking about Home Depot and Lowe's, Kevin, if those that didn't check out the program yesterday, um, could you give them a little bit take? Because I pulled up both companies. Remarkable how close they both are to the highs right now, Kevin. Home Depot and Lowe's, you guys had a great segment yesterday talking about professional versus kind of the retail Home Depot versus Lowe's. Can you talk a little bit about what you guys were talking about yesterday on the show? What we did with uh, Home Depot and Lowe's yesterday was really compare the two and why, even though Lowe's has done a great job of closing the gap with Home Depot, Home Depot used to be the clear leader in, in this space, even though, you know, th those two were battling it out. Home Depot was clearly the winner. But their Home Depot and how they have embraced professional um, contractors and having their own entry and exit for them and how they've embraced that part of, um, you know, being that hardware store for the local community and how the, what they've done, even though, full disclosure, Marvin Ellison, the CEO of Lowe's, is a Home Depot alumni, so he's doing a great job at replicating. And you see the charts on, on both stocks that we put up on, on the screen. They are identical, even though they trade at different prices. So these are two companies doing very similar things, both doing extremely well. Home Depot doing slightly better just because they're bigger and better. And, and you know, they've, had, they, they've been doing this a little bit longer. And so... They're clearly the leader in this industry, but Lowe's is certainly a worthy competitor to them as they work through this. You know, Lowe's focusing on more of the retail, Home Depot, a, a, a more uh, complete package of retail and professional labor, uh, Tommy. I think it was cool how you laid out, and I forget whether it was um, you or Tom, but just talking about, you know, um, people in, this, in that industry in particular, the professional side of things that Home Depot has a nice advantage in. And some of the trends like Folio was talking about, you guys were saying maybe contractors are more in. Maybe over the last year and a half, Kevin, it just makes sense in my own head that people have kind of exhausted what you might be able to do from home. And maybe now you're, you're transitioning to maybe you need a little help on a contractor side. Maybe you have enough equity in your house at this point that you don't mind putting a little bit of capital back into it. Uh, but you said, you know, people so busy in that industry, if you're a contractor, um, to make a change to a company like Lowe's, and even in T if TF TFNN, you know, we do credit card processing, making those types of changes, folks, um, it really has to be worth it, right? Because it takes a lot of effort. And you say, you know, unless Lowe's has some kind of, you know, logistical supply chain advantage, it's really tough to imagine the change. And it really just clicked for me because it really is in terms of if you're a contractor out there, you know that economies of scale equals that Home Depot is a bigger company. They're probably going to be able to compete better on price. It was just a cool conversation as you guys brought that home. Uh, and I think it was Tom that mentioned maybe the tougher one is saying where both of these stocks end up uh, year end versus where one or two of them, because both of them trading so well. We have rising yields. We got a real estate market staying strong, though. Uh, we'll move from yesterday to today. We got bank earnings starting next uh, tomorrow, really, with JP Morgan yep. as they line things up. What are you guys going to be talking about on the program coming up at 12 today, Kevin? Well, of course, we're talking about J.P. Morgan in the first segment, and then nice. we'll look at Delta Airlines also has earnings in the second segment. Like Folio, we'll talk about the airlines, and we'll cover Delta Airlines, and then we'll look at Airbnb. They just got Ooh. upgraded. We're going to take a look at them as vacation season is getting underway here, Tommy. As the weather gets cold in the Midwest, you know what we're thinking? Getting out of here and getting south, Tommy. You know what's crazy, Kevin? I think I remember you guys talking Airbnb all the way back two months ago for their earnings. Uh, I think you guys had a bullish trade on some point, man. It kind of put it on my radar a little bit. No real trade, but this thing's been on quite a little tear from 130 up to 166. Uh, and Delta, the airline's always interesting. I was talking to my dad, I think it was yesterday, just saying, you know, the airlines, the cruise ships, you know, when when is kind of the Max Payne situation going to end? And then, of course, we got a weekend like we just got with Southwest. Uh, they're not out of the woods just yet, it just seems. Well, Kevin, man, we appreciate the conversation as always. We look forward to the show today at 12. We'll be watching. Thanks for having me on, Tommy. Have a great day.
You too, Kevin. Take care. Folks, check it out. Every trading day, 12 noon Eastern time, Fast Market, Kevin Higgs, Tom White. They do an outstanding show, and we're coming into the most wonderful time of the year, earnings season. So check it out, 12 noon Eastern time. All right, markets, as we got about four minutes to go until the opening bell, right near pre-market session highs, we get the S&P up about 11 points, the NASDAQ right now up 62, all the markets well off the lows we had last night. We jumped to crude, 80-80, look at this volatility in that crude contract. You want some volatility in both directions, folks. Crude just traded from 81.15 down to 79.50. So what are you talking about? Yeah, we're talking about a buck 65 and now we're up more than a dollar in both directions watch out all right folks stay tuned we'll be coming back we'll take a quick break we'll be coming back for the opening bell we'll check out what's moving today uh we'll be right back in three minutes stay tuned Are you having fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Well, we just had a uh, bear market in crude for the better part of one hour where we traded from $81 down to $79.60. And just like that, we're back above $81. Remarkable research. And she put it on a minute chart. I mean, look at this thing. 
from nine o'clock this morning, it's a straight shot upward to the tune of a buck fifty to the upside from nine oh nine. It's only nine thirty, folks. In the last twenty one minutes, crude's up a buck fifty. You're right back to where we were pre market uh, in crude. Markets open. S and P is giving back a few points of the gains right now. You have the S and P's positive by seven, Nasdaq positive by forty nine, the Dow positive by about twelve. All the markets may be sliding slightly to the red as we open. Bitcoin holding steady at fifty seven thousand six fifty five right now. We covered crude. Checking out gold contract right now. Gold up five dollars at seventeen sixty. Gold quite the day Friday. We kind of just been chopping around where yesterday's action was in that gold contract, and we jumped to notes and bonds as the market opens. We got the ten year negative by four ticks. Uh, excuse me, positive by four ticks, trading one thirty thirty one. All right, jumping around to what else we got going on. Southwest. Uh, we'll see what uh, comes about in terms of where the real reality in terms of what happened here. Interesting, though, how many flights they send through Florida was the one thing I wanted to bring up. Um, yeah, 950 flights canceled Saturday, 1,500 on Sunday. Uh, where is my Florida statistic? 50% of their flights touch Florida, which... Um, here it is. The Dallas-based carrier particularly hard hit because as much as 50% of its daily lines of flight or where the plane travels from the start of the day to the end touch Florida. Southwest, big fans of the Sunshine State, I guess. Um, bad weather and traffic interruption in the area left Southwest with zero arrivals and departures in some cities for a time Friday. Friday. And the problem here is that once they're backed up, it's going to take some time to sort this out. You have pilots saying this has nothing to do with no work. Maybe staff shortages contributing, to say the least, I'd say. But nonetheless, let's pull up Southwest shares. LUV is their symbol. And uh, down to 50.75 last night. You're basically flat this morning with a positive market on the open. Let's check out some of the FANG stocks as we open up the market. Amazon shares right now up about a tenth of percent. Microsoft shares down a tenth of percent. Apple shares down 10 percent as well. We jump to Tesla. Always trading higher. Tesla was just above 800 bucks. Right now, you're up six dollars, up eight tenths percent at 7.98. Uh, Elon Musk, now the richest man in the world, uh, 220 billion, something like that. Bezos is at 190. A big portion of that, um, the biggest portion, obviously being in Tesla, but a big portion of Elon's wealth coming now from SpaceX with 100 billion market cap valuation. So interesting how that plays out. All right. Just give me one second. Excuse me. Okay. Uh, all right. Let's jump down. Some of the other stocks that are moving. Let's see. Where are we going to the list? Here we go. Uh, GlaxoSmithKline. They're on the positive after Bloomberg reported that the $54 billion consumer product unit is attracting buyout interest from private equity firms. Uh, the market always likes when you sell off a portion of your assets for straight cash to the tune of $54 billion. I uh, would say it is far advanced with plans to separate the consumer business. Airbnb, as Kevin was talking about, they'll be talking about a little Airbnb coming up at noon Eastern time. Upgraded Airbnb to outperform from market perform, saying the street's underestimating 2022 bookings growth and that the increase in alternative lodging will be a permanent part of the travel landscape. Airbnb up in the positive. That'd be interesting as they have that conversation on fast market. Talk about adding to that up 4.6%. Um, you back it up on the daily. As I had said, quite a run back from the 130 price point on July 19th. What did we get to? A low of 130.31. One and we're trading right now at 174.84. And this is the part that I really try and wrap my head around in terms of the fundamental nature of where we go in this economy. Um, we're really close to getting over this hump, folks. We got vaccines coming from 5-year-olds to 11-year-olds, right? Um, you know, I encourage everybody, if you're not vaccinated, to go out there and get vaccinated for yourself, for the people around you. Uh, what is going to happen, because it's unfortunate, because I have kids at home that don't have that option to get vaccinated. So I get frustrated when people say it's a personal choice um, because they don't have that choice right now. Once every child has that choice to get vaccinated, it is then going to be basically open season completely. If I didn't have small kids around my house that aren't vaccinated, uh, I would basically be living worry-free because I'm vaccinated, right? The problem with not getting vaccinated is that there are people around that don't have that choice yet, especially kids 11 and under. Once that comes, which it is coming, folks, you're going to have 5 to 11-year-olds coming down uh, in the next month probably, and then you're going to have kids probably 2 to 5 at some point, many months after that, as they make sure that they go over those studies as well. 
um, being extra careful for the young kids, which would make sense that they would be last studying that. Point being, we are very close to those fears all subsiding, at least locally in terms of domestically, and hopefully in the next six to 12 months after we get over that whole hump domestically, vaccines make it across the globe. On a scale of travel stocks have been so hurt, you're seeing Airbnb as we continue to talk up 5.1% right now. I mean, cruises are going to become a thing again. Um, the term COVID cruise, which I completely agree with right Right now, I ain't going on any COVID cruises just yet, folks, um, because the risk there, especially with unvaccinated kids, I wouldn't do it. OK, but even myself, I don't want to get on a cruise where then there's an outbreak and I get stuck on that thing or something. Or I just don't want to be in a cruise where you're isolated with people and there's an outbreak to that degree. Uh, don't want to do it yet. Need to see a little bit of an improvement, which is why most people would say the same thing, probably, which is why cruises are well off where you've been. But in the next year or so, that is going to turn the corner. And once it does get me on a plane, get me on a beach, get me on a cruise, get me in an Airbnb, send me to the Caribbean, send me to the slopes in Denver. Um, and so I think you're gonna see that type of a resurgence later. And you're seeing that type of resurgence in Airbnb. And the world has changed when you talk about travel. Uh, with a family myself, I'm sure many of you are familiar, going to uh, a home. I mean, last October, I think it was, I was in an Airbnb. Now, these are before vaccines. Um, we're expecting a child, so we want to be extra careful coming in October of 2020. One to go away before the birth of our son in February. So what do we do? We went to an Airbnb. Uh, we went to an Airbnb in uh, a, a cabin in Tennessee. Um, but it was a beautiful experience. You got a nice cabin, a nice home anyway, at a pretty affordable price. The one thing that does really get out of, out of hand there is the fees, which is why you have uh, the company, a company like Airbnb, once they collect all those fees, they're talking about a valuation of $110 billion. That's the only thing to be careful on some of these equities. You say, yeah, this thing is gonna be a great equity. Of course they are, uh, but the market already knows they're gonna be a great equity, which is why they're valuing, valuing, valuing it at $110 billion market cap. Let's jump around to some of those other airlines. Now we'll put it back to a daily for the last year. There's Airbnb off their double bottom. That was a nice double bottom there. Uh, Boeing shares, I've talked about many times, skipping around the bottom line of that channel line that it's been in from the lows that it had on COVID. You check out Delta Airlines right now. Delta, even from this last acceleration in September, you pull back to almost a 50%. Delta's up three tenths percent today. Let's look at JetBlue domestically. JetBlue, I mean, look at these runs, right? You're right back to the 618 in JetBlue. That might be a nice entry there. You chopped around here back uh, towards the end of 2020 and the beginning of this year, made it up to 22 bucks almost. You've chopped around at this $15.11 price point yet again. Uh, not a bad entry, not a bad entry potentially. You take a look at the three-year weekly of JetBlue, well off the highs this year and well off the highs that we came into COVID last year as well. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be coming back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. 
Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got all the markets in positive territory right now. Speaking of positive territory, check out the chart. I got Signet Jewelers up right now. Uh, Signet raising their outlook for the second time in recent history. This chart, my goodness, you commit to COVID as things blast up to 30 bucks early in 2020. You commit to COVID at just under 30 bucks, trade out down to $5. Uh, not sure how the world thought that we weren't going to buy diamonds anymore, but they have almost all the jewelry shops in the malls. When you hear these names, folks, whether it's Zales, uh, let's jump back to the story. Consumers are splurging on diamonds. Signet Jewelers just hiked its full year outlook yet again. So they have K Jewelers. Shame on me, not remembered K. Uh, Zales and Jared, got it, Jared, also hiked the outlook. Um, so they buy, they're buy. they buying diamonds direct for almost a half billion dollars in cash. Signet, which owns those chains, also raised their outlook for the fiscal third quarter and for the year. It's the second time they've raised that outlook just in recent weeks. Uh, big number there. Yeah, and in a bid to reach younger shoppers, an inch closer hitting annual revenue goal of $9 billion. Not a bad number when you talk about annual annual revenue. They see third quarter revenue ranging between 1.42 and 1.45. How about up from 1.26 to 1.31? That's a massive upgrade on a percentage basis. Um, you know, they, they might have been at 1.26. Now the upper portion is 1.45. That's almost an extra, what, $190 million extra in revenue over 90 days? Big time numbers. Uh, for the year, you're looking at revenue 7.04 to 7.19, an upgrade from the high sixes they had earlier. Remains on track to shutter more than 100 locations this year and open 100, primarily under its banter by piercing Pagoda Banner not familiar. Uh, nonetheless, quite a chart for Signet. You're up 1.1% today, extending that, but the market actually just turned on a dime, just like that. Look at that sell-off. S&P is now negative by two right now. You get the tech stocks pulling back, just gave back 100 points. Uh, in about the last 10 minutes or so, you get the Dow trading lower as well. Russell, only index currently still in the green. All right, jumping around to some of the equities, the, uh, the other equities that are moving today. We talked about Signet. Nike, they were higher. Let's see how they're trading. They got an upgrade after Goldman initiated coverage, excuse me, with a buy rating, setting a healthy industry backdrop as well as strong growth initiatives by the athletic footwear and apparel maker. Now, Nike was dealing with some big problems there um, for supply on their last earnings. Still up 1.1%, but they just gave back some of those gains. You take a look at the daily and spent quite a slide for Nike shares from 174 down to a low of about 144, you get back 30 bucks just like that and really dropping off on those last earnings when they talk about having problems. This market, a little bit of weakness here to say the least, fast and all out with their numbers. Uh, matched estimates, quarterly earnings, 42 cents a share, revenue in line, continue to experience inflation related to materials and transportation costs. 
Are we seeing the beginning of a theme in earnings, potentially fast and all up nine tenths percent right now, but giving back some of those gains on, on the open up to 5357. We talked about Southwest, so they canceled 10% of their plans yesterday, uh, cited bad weather in Florida, staffing issues for the higher level of cancellations. They hope to normalize things by Wednesday. MGM got an upgrade to outperform from new neutral at Credit Suisse, which sets a price target for the resort's operator stock at 33 bucks a share. Let's see where we're at right now. Now, MGM, it's interesting, these companies. Uh, there you go. Papa, 6.2%. What's going on here? MGM. Uh, outperform, which set a price target. Why are they outperforming with 33 bucks? Do I have the right stock up here? I sure do if it's trading at 47. All right, maybe they got a typo in here. Um, Credit Suisse feels MGM has not been given enough credit by the market for its ongoing transfer information. If you've watched NFL football uh, at all, you've probably seen the ads for bet mgm i mean the betting world just is going to change things in a dramatic fashion disney's going to license espn that's part of the reason why i like disney the sports um aspect of what they cover i mean they almost don't have a monopoly on sports coverage imagine the espn you know sports book that you can bet on i imagine that's going to have quite a draw in a big way Jumping over to the next story, Tesla sold just over 56,000 vehicles made in China during September, the largest monthly total since it started production in Shanghai two years ago. They're up a bit. Square, seems like they're always getting upgrades to overweight from neutral, uh, cites valuation, strong growth prospects, and a disruptive business model. Yeah, these Square, PayPal, they are just through the roof, man. Up 1.2%. You check out this chart on a weekly you have a high of 289 so man you've clawed back some of this we have quite a consolidation going on you could say you got a consolidation between about 200 and 280 on this equity you're trading up today on that upgrade and moderna uh they are up one percent ahead of thursday's fda panel meeting now the company's application for booster shots you might have moderna and johnson and johnson boosters coming down the line uh shortly as well all right what else we got going on how about lg they're going to have to pay almost $2 billion to General Motors uh, over the Bolt EV battery fires. LG has agreed to reimburse GM up to $1.9 billion to recall the Chevy Bolt EVs due to fire risk caused by faulty batteries provided by the South Korean supplier. I mean, that's a big number, but you've seen it. They've been in the press recently. Um, it's a tough deal. Uh, these, you know, Tesla has had to weigh it many times in terms of getting the press of these battery fires and uh unfortunately folks electric vehicles are coming down the line and these fires are a problem that are going to persist um those electric batteries they go on fire you're not putting them out anytime soon maybe they'll advance the technology for some safety there but that's going to be a problem and you're seeing it for lg i mean two billion dollars quite a price tag speaking of commodities aluminum notching a new 13-year high as supply fears predominate aluminum climbed to a fresh 13-year high as fears over supply curbs outweighed concern that a deepening energy crisis would hurt growth. The lightweight metal has surged as the global economic recovery boosts demand while electricity crisis in Asia and Europe threatens to crimp supply commodities. They were posting a chart of the CRB. I think it's our man Jimmy in the den earlier. Just quite a run. Uh, you want to talk about inflation? They made a great point. That's all you got to talk about, folks. Commodities. And, you know, if you ever hear politicians, it was real in vogue with President Trump talking about, you know, wanting a weak dollar. Folks, you can't always want a weak dollar because it allows you to compete internationally because what it all comes back to is commodities. We're seeing it right now. If if you have a trash currency and you live in an environment where commodities are through the roof, you are going to pay up the nose in a big way because we all pay for goods. I mean, there's the, there's been a transformation in the country when you look at, you know, the world in terms of how currencies are used and you want a weak currency. But in the long run, a strong dollar, a strong currency is what you need because it all comes down to goods. And the goods get bought with your own dollar, even if we're pushing it abroad. You're just seeing it in commodities. So keep that in mind when you see an environment like this uh, where we just see commodity prices through the roof. I mean, crude, staying above 81 bucks, 81.13, made it up to 82. 
this morning, but quite a run. And we got markets in negative prices. We're coming into bank earnings tomorrow. JP Morgan, they'll be talking about that on Fast Market as well. A little bit of a give back this week to start things off. You see on a weekly basis, last week we make a high of 171.51. You give back six bucks just like that. Look at this two day run. Yesterday we were up at 171. This morning we're at 164. Coming into their numbers tomorrow, you pull up the analyze tab. Not that big of a move. $3.21 priced into their numbers for earnings. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be coming back to finish up the show. Be right back. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Just like that, we got all the markets back in the green. S&P's up by three. We got a little bit of volatility in both directions as we come into earnings, kicking things off tomorrow. A great time for a webinar from our man, Basil Chapman. Basil, coming up next at 10 o'clock with uh, the Tiger Technicians Hour. He is going to be doing a webinar, folks. He's going to be talking about it coming up at 10 o'clock. He'll tell you all about it coming up next hour. Uh, but I encourage you to check it out, what to prepare for into the year's end and what sectors to focus on. Basil will be in there with 90 minutes for subscribers to the opening call one week from today, folks. Tuesday, October 19th, 4 o'clock, right after my dad's program from 3 till 4. Basil will be in there with his opening call subscribers for 90 minutes that will be archived. If you can't attend it, if you've never been to one of Basil's webinars before, I encourage you to check it out. All new subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you got nothing to risk. You get a month of his newsletter. 
All right, you get access to all the archive webinars he's done. He's got like seven, eight, nine webinars that you gain access to right away. As a subscriber, you gain access to the webinar going on a week from today, 90 minutes. Of course, that's archived as well. And going into that, what Basil says is, you know, you click this, you can head on over to the newsletter. You can sign up, folks, whether it's for a month for 149, six months for 695, that's 22% off, or you can save 33% of the year. If you're thinking about staying on, I encourage you to check out the six months. Still comes with a 30 day money back guarantee. So if you're thinking about staying on, you can add the savings in there. Uh, but what Basil talks about here is send the questions into him. Basil Chapman at TFNN.com. If you're a subscriber out there, you got special things you want him to take a look at. Maybe you're wondering about the year end. You have questions for Basil to take a look at in this 90 minute webinar. Sign up, send him the email. He will talk about them during that webinar as uh, his subscribers contribute to the content of that webinar going on a week from today, folks. Check it out on the front page of TFNN for the opening call. Basil Chapman coming up next. All right, folks, we got markets. How about flat? NASDAQ, flat to the tick, 14,700 S&Ps positive by four. Russell catching a bid. Russell now up 17 points, eight tenths percent in the positive. Stay tuned, folks. We got our man Basil Chapman. He's coming up next with the Tiger Technician Tower. Fast market, uh, excuse me, Larry Pesamento at 11. Fast market at 12. Steve Rhodes at one o'clock. Dave White at two o'clock. And Tom O'Brien, my dad from three till four. Thanks so much for starting your day with me, folks. Stay tuned. Basil's up next. We'll be right back.